So we're going to start with the main hoop. And the reason why we start with the main hoop is because every other tube is attached to it. So you can't really mock up, measure, bend, cut, weld, or anything, any other tube, unless your main hoop is in position. Okay. So there's a few things that you need to consider. Every single cage should be custom tailored uh, to the driver. It's kind of like getting fitted for a suit. You know, they take all of those measurements and they get everything and you put that thing on and you're like, oh wow, that's dead on, you know, as opposed to just buying one off the rack saying, oh yeah, I think this is my measurement, right? You need to have the ultimate comfort, basically, okay? So during each race, if your driver is not comfortable, you're not going to have a really good race, okay? You want them to feel kind of at one with the car and that's the whole purpose here. The goal is to uh, get the cage to fit your driver. Okay, not you, the builder. Okay, so we'll talk about the driver for a minute. You need to note about the driver themselves, whether they're tall, whether they're really short. Okay, uh, somebody who's a little bit shorter, the main hoop is going to be a little bit more forward on the car. Versus somebody like me, uh, I'm almost six foot three, so that main hoop's practically going to be in the back seat when I drive, and where my comfort level is and how I like to sit. Okay, so that's one thing you need to note and remember. Okay, the uh, seat itself. Now, this seat is going to change. Okay, we have a Sparco circuit seat with a Hans device compatible that's going to go into it. Uh, if that's going to change up, then the position of the main hoop might, okay, and the, everything that's attached to it. Okay. The height of the seat, the position of the seat fore and aft, the angle or the layback degree of the seat also changes the position of the main hoop and the design of the main hoop, and this is all very, very important. So. What I did before the driver left, when he dropped it off, we did an initial fit check. Now it is with this seat, and that's going to change, but that's something I have to keep in mind when I'm positioning this main hoop and when I'm measuring it out. Okay, So once I get the main hoop in, we need to do a fit check with the new seat locked up in place, and uh, we'll figure out the position of the main hoop later. But for right now, we can get it measured, bent up, and, and set in place. In addition to all of that, certain other things will change the position of the main hoop later down the road. Everything is always subject to change. So as the driver may say right now, I've got the seat that I want that is perfect, they might find one later on down the road that they, you know, that they're going to like a lot better, and that's going to have to go in here. Uh, things about the steering wheel, certain steering wheels will change, because if the driver's position now is here, and they put it in, let's say, a deep dish, and it goes on here, closer to them, they might want to move the seat back a little bit, so you're going to have to give enough room for that. So, as we're measuring all of this, we need to keep all of that in mind. Uh, the driver's equipment. This is also something that when you do your fit checks and you do your consultation with your with your driver, that you find out where and what they're going to be using. Okay, things like a Hans device, a uh, uh, their helmet, the type of helmet, the height of the helmet versus where they're sitting, and everything else like that changes the position of the main hoop. And this is definitely something you need to keep in mind. So with all of that in mind, the driver's going to come in for his fit check in all of his gear. Okay, but in the meantime, we can identify our tolerance and we can start bending up our main hoop, okay? And that, later on when we do the fit check and he comes in and all of his gear will identify or place the roll cage in the correct position, okay? So I'm gonna start with the tolerance. Now, in a completely stripped out car like this, uh, the tolerance is, uh, you know, I like a nice form-fitting cage, so I'm gonna give myself less of a tolerance. Now, the tolerance is gonna be the space between the outermost point of the tube and the chassis itself, okay? In completely stripped out cars like this, I give myself a tolerance of about one inch. And that one inch translates to a half an inch on each side. Okay, That allows tech officials to get their mirrors and their inspection spots and whatnot so they can check the tubes to do as they need. Okay, uh, Some cars I can actually maintain as much as a half inch, which leaves a quarter inch on each side uh, of clearance, of tolerance. So for this build, I'm going to try and maintain a point somewhere between a half and a, uh, a quarter inch of clearance on each end. Okay, so whatever measurement we have, we're going to subtract our tolerance. Okay, so I'm just going to notate in the beginning here that I want to try and maintain a tolerance of half an inch. Okay, so each time I'm going to add or subtract an inch to it, and that'll that'll give us a pretty good tolerance. Okay, so now we can finally measure the roll cage, and this is where we get to all the fun stuff. You only need a handful of tools, and you'll need to write all your measurements down. So I use kind of a generic form that I make. Uh, it has the outline of a roll cage, has our four angles that need to be bent. Nine times out of ten, they're going to be identical on both sides. But I have all four of them listed. The start points of each bend, okay, those are also listed on here. Uh, the center line, our datum lines, and uh, our height and width, which is all part of the datum lines, okay. So to measure out, you don't really need a whole lot of tools or anything extremely fancy. Uh, you need some form of a marker. Uh, to mark on your chassis. 
Uh, to mark on the chassis, I use tape. And the reason why I just put a line of tape down and mark on that is because it's kind of rude and tacky uh, to just start scribbling all over your uh, your client's car. You know, once the cage is all in here, they probably don't want to see a whole bunch of lines and measurements and scribbles and stuff like that. So use tape. You can also peel it off and put it back on a, a new piece in case you screw up your uh, your measurement or whatever the case is. You can write anything you want on it. It's not going to go through to the chassis. You need some form of an angle finder or protractor is what they are. I like to use the magnetic base ones because they just kind of stick there and they tell me exactly what I need. Uh, you can use the other type of angle finders or protractors. Uh, you know, you just stick it up there, kind of stick it in place where you want it, tells you the angle right out. Doesn't matter which one. You need your tape measure and you'll need the cheater. Now the cheater is the bar that we're going to use. It's already bent up. Uh, it has the same center line radius of the you know, the roll cage that we're going to be doing here. It's also made out of the same material that we're going to build the roll cage out of, which in this case is inch and a half DOM. The start of the bend has a notch cut out in it, and this is very nice because I can stick the tape measure in there when I place it and run my lines accordingly, and I know where the start of each bend is, and that's going to give me my measurement. All right, so we're going to start with the datum point, and the datum point or the datum line is the base of which we're going to start from. So a datum is just kind of a fancy way of saying start or base, okay? So there's something very imperative that you need to remember here, okay? And that is once the cage is all mocked up and in place and whatnot, you have to be able to weld the top of it, okay? So if you maintain a tolerance of, you know, a half inch or a quarter inch, you can't get the welder in there to actually uh, to run a bead on it. So uh, there's a couple of ways that we do this or that we work around that. One of them is to build a rocker box and the rocker box will elevate the cage off of the floor. And uh, when you go to weld the top of it, you remove the rocker box, the cage drops down, and then you can weld the top of it. The other option is to cut holes in the floor, and then uh, once, once it's time, again, you'll drop the cage through the floor and you'll be able to weld the top of it, put it back up, plate the bottom of it, and there's your mounting point. So in this case, on this chassis, I'm going to build rocker boxes. So the top of the rocker box will be the base or the beginning or the datum line. Okay, That's what we got to measure out for right now. So you need to make sure that your width is compensatory with the rocker box. So in this case, the rocker panels kind of angle inward slightly at about 10 degrees. So we're not going to measure the floor. We're actually going to measure the height of which the rocker box is going to be at or the point at which the rocker box is going to be. So I'm going to look for a couple of uh, symmetrical points, uh, which I found uh, both here at the inlet of the door or the door jam right here on this pinch weld or this seam. Same thing on this side. It's the same thing on both sides. So what I'm going to do is measure that. Looks like I got 55 inches. So my datum width is 55 inches. Now we're going to need to compensate for the rocker boxes when we when we measure out our height. So there's some extra stamping in the floor here, and it's kind of uneven. So when we go for our height measurement, we're going to need to subtract the uh, height of the rocker box. So how tall is that going to be from the floor? I just take my protractor. I'll stick it on the edge there at about what the height of the rocker box is going to be. Look at it while it's at zero degrees and then take a measurement to the edge of it. Which looks like I'll have a six inch rocker box. Okay. So when we measure our height, rocker box six inches. When we measure up our height, we'll subtract six inches and that'll be, that'll be our datum height, which we've got to this rib. 47 inches, so we subtract a 6 inch rocker box and we got 41 inch uh, datum height. 41. So inside that area, 55 inches wide by 41 inches tall, that's going to be the area that our main hoop is going to be built into. Okay. So all we need to do is find out where our halfway point is and we'll start, we'll start from there. You know, we'll calculate all of our angles and figure out where they're going to be. The easiest way that I've found to do this over the years, rather than calculating the point, start and stop point of every single bend, is to actually start from the very center of the top of the main hoop and work our way down, okay, on both sides. So in order to do that, we're going to need to figure out where the center line of this is, okay. So we're going to pick two points, just the same as we did down below, is we're going to pick two points and find the center of that. And it looks like I've got a distance width of 38 inches okay so half of 38 is going to be 19 inches it's 
take a piece of tape right down the middle. Go 19 inches. Now just to make sure I'm not going crazy, I'm going to measure from this side. Got 19 inches as well, so I'm going to fatten that line up just a little bit so I can see it a little bit better. Okay. Now we're going to take our cheater. We'll just kind of place it up here and I'll even stick it right up against there because we've got our tolerance that we'll end up subtracting. And I can see the point where I need to put another piece of tape. Right about here. Okay. Now let's put this back up again and right where the notch is, we'll make another mark. I'm going to do the same thing on this side as well. Now let's take a measurement. like 14 there, 14 there, so 14 inches on the start, or from the center line to the start of each bed. I'm going to notate that. Start, 14, 14. Okay, so we can't forget that we have a tolerance that we have to take care of here too, and I, what I did is I wrote down the exact dimensions as they were measured, and then I'll calculate the tolerance later. The reason why I do it that way is in case I want to go back and change up uh, you know, the amount of tolerance that I have on it, I don't have to worry about remembering or anything like that. So we put down the exact dimensions as they measure on the chassis, and then we'll go back and subtract the tolerance later. So now we need to figure out what point or what degree of bend we need to add into the tubes on the main hoop. So we already know exactly where they start, we just don't know what the degree or what angle they need to sit at. So what I'm going to do is take the protractor, we're going to stick it on here. Looks like we've got a 65 degrees is where that sits at. So I'm going to take a piece of tape here and say 65 degrees. That's the first bend. Next, we need to figure out at what point this, to calculate where our second bend is, at what point the B pillar actually starts bending back inward and starts transitioning into that angle from being perpendicular to the floor or to our datum point. So right about, right about there. We take another piece of tape here, grab our marker. See if we can find that line again. Right about there. So if this was 65 degrees, we automatically know that the difference between 65 degrees and 90 degrees is going to be our second bend here. So what I want to do is actually figure out at what point it's going to start. I'll measure from the datum line to the line where it starts the transition begins. That's 21 and a half inches. So the start of our first bend from the datum point is going to be 21 and a half inches. We already know our angle up top is 65 degrees. And the angle right here, since this is going to make 90, is going to be 25 degrees. So I have all of that filled in, the opposite side should be exactly the same, but what I'm going to do is play safety on this one because you don't want to go about throwing materials away after you bend the main hoop wrong. I'm going to go and measure this side out and make sure that it's exactly the same. Then we're going to get to bending some tubes. <laughs> 